Hi, my name is Hannah Rising. I work for the Employee and Community Health Promotion Department at Beaumont Health. Today we are talking about how to manage your stress mindfully. So to begin, we're going to determine what is stress. So when we look here at the definition, stress is a transaction between a person and his or her environment that is appraised as exceeding or taxing the his or her, her resources. When we start with a definition, it might seem a little bit complex, but let's break it down together. The definition begins with the transaction. Another word for transaction would be incident or something happens. Um, so this thing could be minor or it could be major. It could be a minor thing like I don't like going to the dentist, so that's stressing me out. Or it could be something major like I'm trying to sell my home or plan a wedding. So something happens and the next thing that we as human beings do is appraise that thing. Another word for appraise is judge. So we do this all the time. Is this good? Is this bad? Do I like this? Do I not like this? So something happens and we are appraising it and everyone judges or appraises things differently based on personality, culture, past experiences. So something has happened and we are judging it and then we're determining do we have the resources to deal with this thing. So when it says resources, it means our skills or tools that we use in order to cope with different things. So that, for example, that could be something like taking three deep breaths or leaving the situation if it's stressful. So if we determine that something happens and we're judging it to exceed our resources, that is stress. So stress manifests itself in many different ways depending on the person. Um, when you're looking at this graphic here, it breaks the signs and symptoms down of stress into four main categories. There's physical, emotional, intellectual, and behavioral. So physically, you might recognize some of the symptoms of stress, signs of stress as being muscle tension, upper back, neck are common areas, maybe a really tight jaw or fatigue. Emotionally, you might feel depressed, moody, um, hypersensitive. Intellectually, you might have some difficulty making decisions, an inability to concentrate. And behaviorally, you may feel yourself isolating from others or neglecting your normal responsibilities. Stress, as I said, manifests itself differently for everyone. And why it's important to know your signs and symptoms of stress is because you need to know how it manifests itself in your life in order to manage it mindfully. So when we feel stress, what is really going on? It is the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is this physical reaction that we might have to this perceived threat or stress that increases our chance of survival. So something happens, our body reacts, and we decide if we can fight it or if we're gonna get out of there. So what happens in this situation, this fight or flight response, is our sympathetic nervous system kicks into high gear. Adrenaline is pumping, our blood sugar is rising, so we're getting that extra energy. Our pupils are dilate, dilating so that we can see better. So our body is preparing ourselves in order to get that energy, in order to help protect and support us. So, why is this an issue if this is something that's supposed to protect us? The fight or flight response is supposed to be used in short term, present moment stress exposure. So picture yourself walking through a jungle and you see a hungry tiger and your stress response kicks in right away, this fight or flight response. That is the ideal situation for your fight or flight response and your sympathetic nervous system to kick in. What's not ideal is that in present day, we don't ever really see a hungry tiger roaming the streets. 
Every once in a while, we can use that short-term present moment stress response, but normally 99% of the hungry tigers that we're running from are in our mind. It's our thoughts, it's how we physically feel, it's how we emotionally feel. So that means that we are exposing ourselves to chronic unmanaged stress. Our fight or flight response and our sympathetic nervous system is on high at a lot, a lot of the times. What happens then is those adre that adrenaline, that high blood sugar, all of those things that are continually in high gear cause chronic health issues that are related to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, among many other chronic illnesses. The good news is, is that stress is not always a foe. It can be a friend. So as we mentioned, you know, long-term stress exposure and getting that sympathetic nervous system um, running at all times can cause long-term chronic illnesses. But stress can be a friend. There is such a thing called positive stress. So positive stress is something like, I need to make a Thanksgiving meal for 40 family members and friends that are coming over. I have a deadline, I have to time all the dishes right, and I wanna make sure that everything tastes good. So that positive stress is pushing me to reach my potential, to cook the best that I can, to decorate the best that I can. And it might seem silly, but that positive stress is making me perform under pressure. So there is such a thing as positive stress. The way that we determine if it's positive stress or negative stress is unique to everyone. Everyone handles stress differently. Everyone has different coping mechanisms when they come across stress in their lives. So for an example, a coping mechanism might be removing yourself from a situation if it becomes too stressful. Another one might be talking through your feelings with a trusted friend or family member. The one that we really are gonna focus on today is practicing mindfulness techniques um, when you are feeling stressful. So what is mindfulness? Before we can talk about the different techniques, let's define it. So mindfulness as defined by John Kabat-Zinn who is a pioneer for bringing mindfulness to the United States, is defined as paying attention on purpose, in the present moment, with curiosity and acceptance. So I'm gonna say that one more time because it's crucial that we know the definition of mindfulness. It is paying attention on purpose, in the present moment, with curiosity and acceptance. Mindfulness is essentially about living in the present moment, not dwelling on the past, not worrying about the future. It's an invitation to come home, to be in the present moment, getting in touch with our feelings, our sensations, our emotions, our thoughts, um, and really being here, being present. So why be mindful? Mindfulness, the research has shown to manage stress in a healthy way, improve immune function, reduce and manage chronic pain, improve mood disorder and anxiety, cope with chronic health conditions, and overall create healthier relationships in your life. The research is really powerful. Studies have shown that we are only in the present with present moment experience about 50% of the time. And that's not a lot, that's half of our life. The other 50% of the time, we are spending in mindlessness, which is really not paying attention to what we're doing. Mindlessness is strongly associated with unhappiness. We are really not hardwired as humans to be happy. We talked about the fight or flight response. In evolution, it has really hardwired us to just survive. But the catch is, as humans, we care and we want to be happy. And the good news there is that we can train ourselves to be happy by practicing these mindfulness techniques and tuning in to your sensations, emotions, and thoughts. So our mindfulness practice is based on this triad of awareness, S-E-T, you can remember it as. S is for physical or body sensations. So that is what you're seeing, you're hearing, you're tasting, smelling, and touching. E is for emotions. There are five main categories of emotions. There's anger, fear, worry, grief, joy, and sadness. Joy and sadness being one. And T is for thoughts. Thoughts 
everyone has them, and it's a constant in, the, in your life. So you can never really get away from those thoughts. Through all of our formal practices that we're going to review today, we are all going to come back to this triad of awareness. Whatever we're doing, we are constantly trying to check back in to our sensations, emotions, and thoughts, bringing us back to live in the present moment in order for us to be more mindful and reduce stress in our life. So the first formal practice of mindfulness is really awareness of breath. Awareness of breath is bringing attention to your natural breathing state. It's not changing the breath in any way. We all breathe, and most often we breathe in our chest. It's mostly a rushed breath. We are going from the post office, to the grocery store, to work, to back home, to dropping our kids off, whatever we're doing. We're breathing very fast paced. This awareness of breath exercise is focused on bringing your attention back to your breath, slowing your breath down a bit, and really just focusing on something that is always there to support us and calm us. So an example of that would just be finding a quiet space in your house, in your office, in your car even, and just quieting your mind, relaxing, and just tuning in to your breath. So you might notice how your breath is moving in and out through your nose. You might notice that your stomach is extending on an inhale and contracting on an exhale. It's really tuning in to this constant presence in our life of the breath. The breath is really the root of all mindfulness practices. The second formal practice of mindfulness is meditation. Now meditation might get a bad rap. Um, it seems hard, it doesn't seem very fun. Um, and you know, mindfulness meditation doesn't have to be this picturesque, I'm going to be sitting with my legs crossed and my hands resting on my legs. While that is a great meditative position, you can really meditate however you would like. Meditation is about quieting your mind. A lot of people think, well, I can't meditate. I have so much going on in my head that there's no way I can ever silence my thoughts, so I'll forget about it. Meditation is not about silencing your thoughts. It's about tuning into your thoughts, acknowledging them, and then bringing that awareness back to your breath. The breath is the center of, my, of meditation. So usually meditation starts off with awareness of breath, and then you go in after awareness of breath and really become aware of your sensations, emotions, and thoughts, that triad of awareness. Now there's many types of meditation. There's silent meditations where no one's guiding you through. You're just kind of paying attention to your own sensa sensations, emotions, and thoughts. There's also a lot of different guided meditations talking about different topics, whether that's gratitude or cause and effect or change. There's a number of different uh, meditations. Loving kindness meditation, or otherwise known as the meta meditation, is really great to cultivate some self-compassion. So you're wishing well not only to yourself, but you're also wishing well out into the world. So I would encourage you to look up loving-kindness meditation um, if you're beginning into your meditation journey. The last formal practice of mindfulness is mindful movement. Now mindful movement, there's two different ones that we're going to talk about today. The first one is Hatha Yoga. Now when you hear the word yoga, that might seem a bit intimidating because you picture you know, young, strong, fit people contorting their bodies into weird shapes. And yes, that can be intimidating, but that is not what Hatha Yoga is. The focus of Hatha Yoga and mindful movement is to really not focus on the physical poses, but it is the yoking of your breath and movement. So you're moving and breathing and you're becoming aware of that, that uh, conjunction during this time of mindful movement. So a good example of that is just the beginning pose of mountain pose. You're standing straight, your feet are rooted on the ground, all four corners, and you're just checking in to how that feels, your connection with the earth. You're standing up straight, your knees aren't locked, your shoulders are rolled back, and your hands are down by your side, just resting with your palms facing outward. And it's called mountain pose because your head is just held up high like the peak of a mountain. You can close your eyes, you can check in with your breath, and then just notice Coming back to that triad of awareness, your S-E-T, 
sensations, emotions, and thoughts, and just stay. You don't have to do anything else. That is Hatha Yoga. There's other poses, of course, that you can be led through, but that mountain pose is a great place to start. The other form of mindful movement is mindful walking. So mindful walking is not about walking towards a destination. It's really about just becoming aware of the mechanics of walking. So it's really kind of just pacing, finding a quiet spot, whether it's outside during really nice weather or it's inside in a quiet space in your house or your office. And what you're just doing is noticing when you pick up your foot off the ground and then you're moving it a little bit and then you're placing the ball of the foot down and then the heel of the foot. So really when you walk, it's lift, move, place. Lift, move, place. And you kind of keep repeating that to yourself while checking in to your sensations, emotions, and thoughts. Now that sounds a little funny like you're walking in slow motion, but really it just kind of brings you back to the simple movement of walking and that triad of awareness that is the root of mindfulness, checking in to your sensations, emotions, and thoughts. So not only are there three formal practices of mindfulness, there are a lot of informal practices as well because we don't have all day to meditate. We don't have all day to do mindful movement or awareness of breath. But you can fit in mindfulness in your normal activities. So for example, you sit down for a meal and you can practice mindful eating. Before you even put anything into your mouth, you look at your plate. What are the colors that I see? What are the textures of things? Can I feel them before I put them into my mouth? And finally, when I eat them, what do they taste like and how am I going to savor this? What are the smells, etc.? There's so many times where you can just push pause and do a little bit of a mindfulness exercise. Maybe you're brushing your teeth and you're noticing the taste of the toothpaste or how the bristles of your toothbrush feel against your teeth and your gums. So those are informal practices that you can practice um, and you can, can incorporate day to day. One great thing that I think has been a lasting thing for me when I've been practicing mindfulness is this STOP acronym. So the, this is all about creating mindful moments. So remembering STOP is pretty easy. S means just that, to stop. Stop whatever you're doing and then T, take three breaths. Close your eyes, feel your belly expand and contract and take three breaths. O is for observing your sensations, emotions, and thoughts, checking into how you're physically feeling, how you're emotionally feeling, and what's going on in your brain. And P, once you've recognized that, once if you've just stopped taking three breaths and observed how you're feeling, you can then proceed in a more modulated, less reactive, more responsive way. So we're kind of taking ourselves out of autopilot and really living in a mindful, present way. So my advice to you in order to manage your stress mindfully would be to create these little spaces in your life where you just become aware. Maybe a goal for you is to take one conscious, intentional breath per hour. Now it might seem a little simple, but it is harder uh, than you think. Once the day gets going, you get busy, but set that as a goal for yourself. One conscious, intentional breath per hour. When you, or if you, practice these mindfulness techniques, and I hope that you do, you will see so many benefits of managing your stress. Remember that if stress is left unmanaged and you feel this emotional exhaustion, you might not be addressing the root cause of a lot of issues that you, health issues that you might be experiencing. You know, hypertension, high blood pressure, um, other chronic illnesses all feed into, all kind of lead back to this unmanaged stress. The benefits that you might feel for managing your stress would be more restful sleep, um, clear focus on important tasks that you might have, better time management, more time for your family, an increased sense of calm and increased enjoyment in life. So I hope that you take the time and I hope that you've learned something about mindfulness and how to manage your stress mindfully today. You take these formal practices or you choose to do the informal practices and just see how it is. I hope that you've enjoyed this talk today and we'll see you next time.